guys, welcome back to my channel where we explore ideas and strategies to help us get more out of life. If you have ever watched the Olympics, have you ever wondered how they do it? Or perhaps you want to channel some of that energy for what you're working on yourself. If you have a big goal that you're trying to achieve by applying what we're going to go through, you are going to absolutely smash it. We're going to talk about how to inspire, think, train, rest and achieve like an opinion. Blah. Like an opinion, like an Olympian like an Olympian. If you want to be good, if you want to be the best, then keep on watching. Let's get into it. Being in the Olympics symbolizes that you have made it. Unlike in school, this is the one participation award that is actually worth something. We have such admiration for Olympians because they represent the best of the best. They are an inspiration for what is possible. When you watch those that are great, whether it's a Michelin starred chef cooking up a storm, or a piano maestro with fingers flying across the keys, or a skilled person working that Excel spreadsheet. Now whatever it might be, if anything, it is just so satisfying to watch. There's something about it, it just sparks joy. We know that they didn't just get here by luck. They had to prove themselves. Basically, they are so good that you cannot ignore them and that is why they motivate and they inspire. All right, so how do Olympians do it? What sets them apart? First, we need to get into the heads of Olympians. I'm talking about the mental game. This is the hardest part. Before you get to compete against anyone else, you must first compete against yourself. This we're gonna separate from the mentality of training. Here we're gonna talk about the actual performance, the day of reckoning, the one big day where everything needs to come together. For the Olympian, this might be their big race, but for you, crunch time might be that assignment or an exam or that product launch for your business or presentation for work or that pitch to a client. There are two parts to this. First, how you think day to day, what you do in practice, and the second part is the actual performance, the big day. So let's work backwards and start with the performance day. There's a great interview with former US national team gymnastics coach and Olympics coach, Christopher Summer, that illustrates this exactly. He talks about the Russian gymnast, Olga Corbett, going to the Olympics. Everyone thought she was going to crush the competition. When they reviewed her training, she was hitting her routines 98% of the time. She was almost perfect. But when she went to the Olympics, she had a massive meltdown. How could this happen to someone that was so prepared for so long? So they looked into this. It turned out there was absolutely nothing wrong with her physical preparation, but the problem lied with her mental preparation. Back in training, coaches and judges waited on her. She went when she was ready. Everything revolved around her. All the equipment was familiar and she only started when she felt comfortable. We all know where this is going. So at the Olympics, it's quite different. Judges don't care if you're ready or not. When they give you the signal, it's time to go. For gymnastics, the warm-up gym might not be where the athlete is. They might have to walk 10 minutes down a concrete hallway before they get there. Then they get to warm up and then they wait until they get called. And when the time comes, they have to get from zero to 100 in 30 seconds. And so for Olga, where everything had gone her way during training, when it came to the Olympic Games, she was not ready. So the Russians changed the way they approached the mental preparation. They basically screwed with the athletes so they were mentally prepared. What this meant was making the athletes wait and get anxious, making them go when they're not ready, making them do cold sets, making crowds come and watch them to try and put them off. So knowing how the performance day plays out informs our day-to-day -day preparation. And essentially what you want to do is to replicate all the elements of the performance day as much as possible. They say that he who sweats more in training bleeds less in battle. This is the mentality. Practice like you're taking the exam and when you take the exam, it will feel like practice. People who give TED Talks are another great example. They often spend a ridiculous amount of time preparing, but there's more to it than that. Tim Ferriss, who interviewed Christopher Summer from earlier, prepared for his TED Talk by practice in front of different groups of strangers to emulate the audience at the TED Talk. He practiced with an elevated heart rate by drinking coffee or exercising before speaking to try and simulate the nerves on the actual day. He also practiced giving his speech on little sleep because he thought he might be too nervous to sleep well the night before his actual speech. Everything here was to try and reproduce the different stresses he might have on the actual day. You almost can't over-prepare when you're trying to be the best. No Olympic athlete made it by just winging it. Which leads us to the next part, the training that takes place behind the scenes. Training is core and fundamental to Olympic performance. Likewise, the study that you do, the practice for exams, the sports that you're preparing for yourself, it's all about putting in. If there's anyone that can teach us a lot about world-class training and preparation, it's the Olympians. There's also one thing that they all do and we all know about it, but forget. Let's see what these Olympians do differently. They have an extreme work ethic. 
They know that there are no shortcuts. You have to put in the work, you have to put in the time. And once you've paid your dues upfront and in full, the results will come. When they train, they focus and do the job well. There's no half-assed attempt. If you're going to put in the time and energy, you might as well do it and do it well. Their consistency is next level. They are working on improving themselves every single day. They go hard, go home and repeat the next day. They have insane self-discipline. Nothing gets in the way of their training. Rain or shine, they get out there and do it, whether they feel like it or not. There's an excellent quote by the artist Chuck Close that captures this. He says that inspiration is for amateurs. The rest of us just show up and do the work. The Olympians and all the best know this. They show up and they go to work. They are determined and there are no excuses. Have you ever been tired and didn't go for that run? Think about the excuses you've made for yourself to not do something. If you were an Olympic swimmer like Michael Phelps who tried to not miss a day of training for years, if they were in the same shoes in the same situation you were, would they even think for a second that that was an obstacle? Thinking like this alone will elevate your mindset and keep you going. If you want to be the best, you have to be willing to do what no one else is willing to do and push yourself to the next level. Athletes often try and make it harder for themselves during training than it will need to be for the competition. So what can you do to take your study or your work to the next level? And there is no better person to push you to the next level than a coach. Olympians know not to go it alone. To become great, they know they must have the best coaches to give them feedback and to keep them on track. Like the best athletes have great coaches, excellent students also have good tutors that help them with their weak points and also to grasp difficult concepts. Like a lot of my friends in high school, as we prepared for the university entrance exams, we went through a lot of tutoring. So during the week, we'd be studying in class and on the weekends, we'd be going to various tutoring sessions whether it be for English, for math, for science, for languages, whatever it might be. And as a result, those who went to extra tutoring as a whole generally did better than those that did not. So if you did this for your studies, why aren't you doing it now? This is the one thing that we know. When we watch the Olympics, we take it for granted. Of course, Olympians have coaches to help them. But when it comes to us, what we're doing now and what we're trying to achieve, why do we forget that maybe we also need a coach or a mentor to help us along? All right. So how many all-nighters have you pulled for an assignment or an exam? How many times have you crammed to the last second for your exams? No Olympic athlete is going to go on the day before the race and try and get a few extra sprints in because they're not quite prepared yet. Despite all that intense training, it doesn't mean that Olympians don't take the time to rest and recover. If anything, Olympic athletes rest harder and recover more intensely than the average person. For both physical and mental performance, there needs to be this time off. No Olympic athlete is going to train 24-7. Roger Federer and LeBron James, both elite athletes and Olympians, sleep for 12 hours a day. They know that the rest and recovery period is where the growth, the adaptation and the development takes place. LeBron James spends $1.5 million on his body every single year. Think cryotherapy, hyperbaric chambers, compression gear, ice baths, deep tissue massage, everything else in between. So what do you do to help yourself perform your best? And a crucial part to all this is injury prevention. And if you're a knowledge worker like myself, the equivalent of injury might be burnout. If you're staring at the computer for 10, 12, 14 hours a day or 16, 18 hours or more, this can quickly become unsustainable. Injury prevention is very high on the radar for Olympic athletes because at that level, everything is already maximized. There is limited time to train, there's limited time to recover. If you're injured and you can't train for a day or a week, a month or a year, then you are hugely set back. If you're injured and you can't show up to the Olympics or you can't show up to your exam, then what good is that? All your hard work has gone to waste. So finally, once you have all that in place, the mindset and the training, you can now achieve the things that no one else has. When your friend walks on the school stage to collect their award or the athletes gets on the podium, this is a combination of all the hard work that we don't get to see behind the scenes. But to help them get to that point, they will have clear goals in place. Olympians don't just have any goal, they have the biggest and most ambitious goals and have a clear path towards reaching it. To be better than anyone else that has come before you, you have to shoot for the stars. So this is the one place that you need to dream big. You have to have that big, hairy, audacious goal. Olympic records, world records, that's what it's all about. Or it might be the high study scores, exam records, sounds similar to me. Or perhaps it's winning grants, industry awards, project funding, or venture capital, all in the same vein. Sometimes you just need goals that are big enough to make you excited. When you set bigger goals, you might have to change your approach completely. It's not just a matter of working a bit harder or working a bit longer. You might have to rethink how you tackle something completely. And when you change your thinking on how to approach something, this is when you might be able to burst through any limitations. For example, running the four minute mile. This is something that people thought couldn't be achieved for a long time. People have been trying to break this time since 1886. 
and it wasn't until 68 years later where Roger Bannister first broke through that time. And once he had done that, 46 days later, an Australian runner, John Landy, broke that time as well. And one year after that, three runners broke that time in a single race. So more than just a physical barrier, sometimes it's the psychological barrier that's holding us back. And through some of their big and audacious goals, Olympians are some of the people best placed to show us how to break through these limitations. Another runner, Eli Kipchoge, said that personally he doesn't believe in limits, and he was the first runner to ever run a marathon in under two hours. These are the people that keep pushing their boundaries and show us that the impossible is possible. So when you're setting your goals like an Olympian, set the bar high and do what people might not think is possible. And this leads us right back to the beginning. By having these achievements, it really motivates and inspires us to then again to think, train and achieve once more. So next time when you're pursuing a goal for yourself and the going gets hard, think about what an Olympian would do if they were in your shoes. How would they exceed these mere human limitations to become great? And now to get back to the action and I'll see you in the next video. This is Hammond Throwbright.